Football has a very long history, so let's look at it on a map. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And we also have a new website, www.charlieandrob.com. We start around the third century BC. In China, Kuju is played, one of the oldest known ball games. Two teams compete around a ball filled with feathers that must be sent into a net without using the hands. In ancient Greece, Episkyros, another ball sport, is played between two teams of 12 to 14 players. The goal of this game is to send the ball over the opponent's line using hands and Looks feet. Like the Romans based their game Harpastum on this sport. In Harpastum, two teams each try to keep the ball in their own camp as long as possible, again using hands and feet. El See. This is where I don't think you can say about the history of football because this isn't football. This isn't football as we know it and it probably isn't football at all. Just because something has a ball and players doesn't make it football. That's like saying basketball originally was football and it's not. Elsewhere in the world, many ball games are played with local rules. Around the 12th century, in northwestern France and the British Isles, a ball game is played that's called Soul in French and Mob Football in English. The rules vary slightly from one region to another. Globally, a match pits two villages, two parishes, or simply two teams against each other. With I'm going to try and remember this one because this is what we learned in college at A-level sport and PE. Basically, all the villages, they had slightly different rules and it would it could consist of a whole village basically trying to get the ball from one end of the village to another end of the village. That was basically it. Could you call that football? I think it was certainly the start of it. Certainly the start of... Um, you have to start somewhere and the rules slowly started coming in to basically meant that when one village played another village, they had the same rules. Which can be composed of several tens of players. The goal is to drop the ball into the camp of the opposing team. This can be in front of the local church door, in front of a wall, or even sometimes in a pond. The ball can be played with both the feet and hands. Most often, it ends in violent free-for-alls. In 1579, in Chesterton, a match between Cambridge University students and villagers got out of hand. As a result, Cambridge students thereafter only played on their own university field. At the beginning of the 19th century in British colleges and universities, team sports are seen as a good way to train young people in discipline, team spirit, and leadership. I do love it when my home city, Winchester, is on videos, TV, YouTube, Winchester. There it is. Basically a load of posh boys. <laughs> I didn't go to Winchester College. At the same time, the Industrial Revolution and the advent of the railroad facilitate exchanges. The idea of organizing inter-university matches appears, but each team plays with its own rules, and the first meetings are confused, especially between teams that mainly favor dribbling, that is, playing with the feet, and those that mainly favor handling, that is, playing with the hands. For a successful match, it therefore becomes necessary to either negotiate the rules beforehand or to divide the match into two half times and to play with the rules of each team for one half. In Cambridge, students from different universities meet regularly to try to establish common rules. In 1857, the Sheffield Football Club is founded as the first independent club in history. The uh. The pronunciation and the word, it's not the pronunciation, sorry, but uh, Sheffield, it's not the Sheffield, it's just Sheffield. You don't need to put the in front of every, every club. It's not the Southampton, it's not the Manchester, it's not the Arsenal. Just Arsenal, Southampton, Sheffield. Don't put the the on the end. That is not linked to a university or institution. The club plays under its own rules, which are similar to modern football. 
In 1863, new and more detailed Cambridge rules are published, but just a few days later, the newly formed Football Association, which represents 11 London clubs and is the first federation in history, publishes its own rules inspired by the Cambridge rules. The clubs that favor handling, seeing the rules evolve towards dribbling, come together in 1871 to found the Rugby, rugby Football, football Union. This marks the break between rugby football and the Football Association, which is today more commonly known as simply football or soccer. The Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. Same year, the Football Association organizes the first FA Cup. The matches last 90 minutes and feature two teams of 11 players, including, for the first time, a goalkeeper. What's great is how quickly they had an FA Cup, the oldest competition in the world, they say, the FA Cup. From creating the standardised laws of the game to then having an actual t proper tournament that, you know, is called the FA Cup and it's still called the FA Cup. Um, there is no changing it. Um, they got it off the grounds quite quickly in the grand scheme of things there. In 1872, the first international match between England and Scotland takes place oh, and ends Scots. in a draw, zero to zero. Oh, it's not zero to zero. I'm so sorry for the American, um, the American narrator. It's just nil nil, zero zero nil nil. Not nil to nil. Not zero to zero. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Calm down, Rob. Calm down. At that time, the United Kingdom is the leading economic and colonial power in the world. British nationals are sent all around the world to serve the empire. Railway workers in Latin America, students in Switzerland, or simply British communities found clubs around the world to play football association, rugby football, or sometimes a combination of both. It I don't know if it's going to actually explain, but the main reason why football spread across the world so rapidly was because of religion. <laughs> Funnily enough, it was religion. Um, it was the the priests and the, um, the he, what do you call them? The people that spread the word. Um, I can't even remember now. You're going to tell me in the comments down below right now. Uh, they went to pr preachers. They went to preach to, to other people and they took football with them. And then football was, you know, learnt by the natives, basically. Natives, that sounds really rude. You know what I mean. In 1881, the first international women's game takes place between England and wow. Scotland. But the fact that women are playing football is frowned upon. And during the return match, a crowd attacks the players, forcing them to flee in their omnibus. Around the world, the sport becomes increasingly popular and many new clubs and federations are created. In 1902, the first international matches outside the United Kingdom are held. Argentina beats Uruguay 6-0 in one match and in the other, the Austrian team wins 5-0 against the Hungarian team. It's just amazing how quickly the game spread. You know, what, 30, 40 years? But that is so quick to then be do playing international matches. Uh, it's, it's astounding. You know, football is the world's game. And, and it is incredible how it has had the ability, unlike other sports, unlike Aussie rules football, that just hasn't had the ability to spread across the globe like football has. In 1904, the Federation Internationale de Football Association, or FIFA, is founded in Paris. At first, it brings together seven countries, with its role being to organize international matches. More nations quickly join FIFA. However, France no, is opposed to England's application because it wants each country to be represented by a single federation. The United Kingdom has the four oldest federations in history, and they don't want to merge. Finally, after a vote, England is admitted separately. 
In 1908, at the London Olympic Games, football is officially admitted for the first time. Professionalism being then forbidden at the Olympic Games, it's the England national amateur football team which represents the country and which wins the gold medal. In 1910, FIFA exceptionally accepts the application of Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. The four British federations could therefore play international matches, but at the Olympic Games, only the England amateur team could represent the country. In 1912, at the Olympic Games in Stockholm, it wins again. In 1916, during World War I, Argentina celebrates its 100 years of independence by organizing a football tournament with Brazil, Chile, and Uruguay. On this occasion, CONMEBOL, the first continental confederation, is founded. In 1920, during the Antwerp Olympic Games, in which Egypt is the first non-European country to participate, Belgium wins, and in 1924 in Paris, Uruguay wins the gold medal in its first participation. Football becomes so popular that many leagues become professional, and as a result, more and more players could no longer represent their country at the Olympic Games, which remains reserved for amateurs. FIFA then thinks of creating its own international competition, which would consist of professional teams. Uh, the FIFA World Cup, I'm pretty sure, is the, the most watched sporting event around the world, the FIFA World Cup. And it's the, the World Cup is a tournament that even non- football fans seem to watch and get involved with and it has that effect on people it really does it gets non-football people involved and actually passionate for their country in 1928, during the Olympic Games in Amsterdam, FIFA announces its project to create its own World Cup. Uruguay, after its new victory at the Olympic Games, is chosen to host the first World Cup, which would take place in 1930 on the occasion of the centenary of the country's independence. Uruguay undertakes Uruguay. to build a new stadium for the occasion, but in Europe, the players and federations have little interest in this event, especially since it takes about two weeks by ship to reach Uruguay, and therefore, the entire trip will take two months. After many negotiations, only four European countries <laughs> agree to participate. The World Cup final is played between Uruguay and Argentina, whose rivalry is so strong that a referee can be found only a few hours before the match and who agrees to adjudicate the match only if he is protected. Both teams come with their own ball. One half is played with the Argentine ball and the other with the Uruguayan. Uruguay wins 4-2. Four years later, it's the turn of Mussolini's fascist Italy to host the World Cup, which is the first to be broadcast live on the radio. Uruguay chooses not to participate in response to the lack of interest shown by European countries for its cup. In the final, Italy wins against Czechoslovakia 2-1. to one. I tell you what, it make, does make complete sense um, that the World Cup at this time was going on, but transport was so... Well, it, it took a long time to get from Europe to South America, for example. And so the difficulties that they would have faced at that time with hosting a world tournament... Wow, it, it honestly puts things into perspective a little bit. How, how, how lucky we are now just to be able to fly and jet off to wherever we want. In 1936, FIFA chooses to play the next World Cup in France, which provokes the anger of Latin American countries who want the cup to be played alternately between the two continents. Uruguay and Argentina decide then not to participate. Spain, which is in the middle wow. of a civil war, does not participate either. And a few months before the cup, Austria, which had qualified, is annexed by Nazi Germany. In the final, Italy retains its title by beating Hungary 4-2. World War II then brings the competition to a halt for the next 12 years. The World Cup resumes in 1950 in Brazil. Germany and Japan, which are occupied, are not allowed to participate. In addition, at the beginning of the Cold War, the countries of the Eastern Bloc do not participate either. 
Only 13 countries play in the finals, including England, which was previously in conflict with FIFA and participates for the first time. But to everyone's surprise, England is eliminated in the group stage after losing to the United States and Spain. This is the only World Cup that does not end with a final, but with a finalist group. Wow. By chance, the two favorites, Uruguay and Brazil, face each other in the last match, which is played in the brand new Maracana Stadium oh, with a record capacity incredible. of 200,000 spectators. A draw would be enough for Brazil to be champion. However, Uruguay wins 2-1 in front of a stunned Brazilian audience. It's funny because with everything going on recently with the Qatar World Cup and the Russian World Cup, you know, it's always a try it's always FIFA trying to not bring political issues into the sport. And I completely get that. You know, I don't necessarily think p politics should ever cross the line into football because it's about the sport. However, it clearly throughout history uh, with with football politics has 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 been involved all the way whether it was back at mob football where villages had their own rules and then you know football becoming rugby and and even to now football has a history of politics and and you certainly cannot get rid of it Four years later, Switzerland hosts the competition, which is the first to be broadcast on television. Hungary, which is undefeated for 31 games, is the favorite. However, to everyone's surprise, West Germany narrowly wins the final, thanks to a goal scored in the final minutes of the game. In 1954, the Asian Football Confederation and the Union of European Football Associations, or UEFA, are founded. The following year, the first European Champion Clubs Cup is organized, the predecessor of the prestigious Champions League. Finally, in 1957, in the context of decolonization, the Confederation of African Football is founded by Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan, and South Africa. But the latter is disqualified from the first African Cup because the country practices apartheid and do not have a multiracial team. In 1958, Sweden hosts the Ball World politics. Cup. It's the only time in which the four British federations participate, and it's the first participation of the USSR. The Brazilian team dominates thanks to its new 17-year-old star, Edson Arantes do Nascimento, better known as Pele, and who will come to be known as one of the greatest footballers in history. Uh Pele recently obviously passed away and I'm I, it's a, I'm glad they've actually mentioned this because Pele was the greatest footballer that ever graced the pitch and people say oh well do you think do you think someone like Pele would would be as good as as modern day players well what I would say is if he was that good with awful pitches those really heavy football boots, those awful footballs. And then he came onto a pitch with perfectly level grass, you know, <laughs> nice lightweight boots, that technology in the footballs these days. Of course, he would absolutely boss it. He is the best footballer that ever graced a football pitch. In the final, he scores two goals against Sweden, giving Brazil its first title. In 1961, the Confederation of North, Central America, and Caribbean Association Football is founded. The following year, during the World Cup in Chile, Brazil retains its title by beating Czechoslovakia 3-1. In 1963, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Football Association, a match is organized at Wembley Stadium between England and a this. FIFA World Selection. England wins 2-1. to one. Three years later, England hosts the World Cup. The competition is marked by the first participation of North Korea, which is not recognized by the United Kingdom, this being the case since the Korean War. England wins the final against West Germany. The same year, the Oceania Football Confederation is founded.
1969 in Central America, while the rivalry is strong between El Salvador and Honduras, the two countries have to play three qualifying matches for the next World Cup. At the end of the games, under high tension and after some scuffles, a short war of 100 hours breaks out between the two countries, resulting in 3,000 casualties. Whoa. The following year, in 1970, Mexico organizes the World Cup, which is the first to be broadcast in color on television. For better visibility on screen, Adidas creates the famous Telstar ball with its black and white design. This is also the first cup played with the yellow and red cards. I didn't know that about the football. That is the stat. When you draw a football, if you if you physically draw a football, that is the design you do. The patches, uh, the hexagons, um, uh, that is the standard design. And I never knew it was because it was easier to see on TV. Interesting. In the final, Brazil wins Again. against Italy and therefore can keep the prestigious Jules Rimet Cup, which was intended to end up in the first country to win three World Cups. FIFA then creates a new trophy that can only stay for a short time with future champions. In 1974, in the middle of the Cold War, West Germany hosts the World Cup, including in West Berlin, with the Berlin Wall, of course, still dividing the city. On this occasion, the only match in history between West and East Germany takes place. In the final, West Germany wins against the Netherlands. In 1976, just as Argentina is preparing to host the next World Cup, a coup d'etat takes place and a military dictatorship seizes power. Despite the controversy, the country still organizes and hosts the World Cup, but the event is marked by a series of suspicions of cheating in favor of Argentina, which is allowed to play its matches in staggered order, thus having the advantage of knowing the scores of the other matches. Argentina wins the final against the Netherlands. It, it said the whole history of football is all about politics, war, conflict. It's, it's madness. Football becomes more and more popular in the world, generating more and more money through ticket sales, TV rights, merchandising, and advertising. Clubs are getting richer and attracting more and bigger investors, while the value of players is rising. In 1982, FC Barcelona buys the new Argentine star Diego Maradona for a record amount of roughly 7 million euros. That same year, post-Franco Spain hosts the World Cup, which is the first to be played by 24 teams and which is seen by 1 billion viewers worldwide. Wow. The event is marred by the match between West Germany and Austria, which is called the Disgrace of Gijón. After a German goal, the two teams who are sure to be qualified slow down their game, eliminating Algeria. On the other hand, France and West Germany face each other in a match full of twists, and it's the first of the competition to end in a penalty shootout. In the final, Italy wins against West Germany. Hey, I've always said always said the best way to end a football match especially if you're a neutral is a penalty shootout it's the highlight of any neutral football match honestly penalty shootouts for the win in 1986 mexico hosts the world cup again replacing colombia which had withdrawn diego maradona is at the top of his game during a match between argentina and england he scores a goal with his hand the that's hand validated God. nonetheless cheating, and becomes known as Maradona. the Hand of God. Four minutes later, he scores one of the most beautiful goals in history, which comes to be known as the goal of the century. In the final, Argentina wins against West Germany. Four years later, during the World Cup in Italy, West Germany takes its revenge by beating Argentina in the final. In 1991, the first Women's World Cup is held in China and is won by the U.S. team. Three years later, the United States organizes the World Cup. A reunified Germany participates for the first time, as well as Russia, after the fall of the USSR. I find it fascinating, actually, that when it comes to men and women's football, 
really, in the <laughs> let's be honest, the, the Yanks aren't exactly the greatest team, are they? They've got no real tradition, it seems. However, that doesn't seem correct because they do have a tradition of football because they talked about um, United States and Spain knocking England out of the group stage many, many years prior. So maybe the whole thing of um, them not having football as a as a tradition, maybe that's wrong. But my point is how the United States women's team is actually a strong, dominant team. Considering traditionally football has been a, a, a man's sport, it's clearly a lot of nonsense. I, I make that clear. But, you know, as it said earlier, women playing football, it was frowned upon. So they've had a lot of catching up. The women have got a lot of catching up to do um, with, in sort of being becoming full-time um, professionals and things. But that's not seemed to have impacted the, the United States because their women's team is actually the dominant team. The final between Brazil and Italy is the first final to end in a penalty shootout. Brazil wins 3-2. In 1998, France organizes the first World Cup played with 32 teams. In the final, France wins against Brazil 3-0 with two goals from Zinedine Zidane. That was... I remember watching this and there was a whole drama with Chris... Uh, a whole drama with Ronaldo. Was he going to play? Was he not going to play? He had been incredible. He had the weird haircut. And he did play. And Brazil were awful. In 2001, Zidane is bought by Real Madrid for the record sum of 75 million euros. The following year, in 2002, Japan and South Korea co-host the World Cup. To everyone's surprise, Turkey and South Korea reach the semifinals. But above all, the final is greatly anticipated as it hits Brazil versus Germany, who still had not met during a World Cup, whereas since 1950, and excepting 1978, all the finals were played by one of the two teams. Brazil wins 2-0 thanks to a double by Ronaldo. It's the fifth title for Brazil, which consolidates its status as best team in the world. In 2006, Germany hosts the World Cup. During the final between France and Italy, Zidane, who plays the last game of his career, is excluded after having given a headbutt to an opponent. Italy wins in a penalty shootout. In 2010, South Africa is the first African country to host the World Cup. The event is followed by 3.2 billion viewers. The final is between the Netherlands and Spain, who have never won a World Cup. Spain wins its first title. That's madness that, that 2010 was the first time Spain won a World Cup because you look at the Spanish team and they have been consistently a good if not great team. So the fact that 2010 was the first time is insane. Well, the Netherlands loses its third final. Poor old Netherlands. At the end of 2010, FIFA awards the 2018 and 2022 World Cups to Russia and Qatar. These choices are money, controversial money, money. because there are serious suspicions of corruption and the two countries are accused of not respecting human rights. Qatar is now investing heavily in football, notably by buying PSG for 70 million euros. The objective is to transform the club, which is in the middle of a crisis, into a major European club capable of winning a Champions League. In 2013, Brazil, which is preparing to host the next World Cup, is challenged by huge demonstrations protesting the building brand new stadiums in the Amazon and the, all these stadiums that are no longer used anymore, but they spent all this money. Ah, it, this was a madness as well. The football recently especially has seen some madness. Excessive expenses made for the organization. The following year, during the World Cup, Germany and Brazil meet for the second time. This time, Germany wins big, 7-1, to one, which is experienced as a humiliation by a large part of the Brazilian population. In the final, Germany beats Argentina and becomes the first European country to win in Latin America. 
In 2017, PSG makes the most expensive transfer in history by buying Neymar for 220 million euros. The following year, the club follows up with the purchase of Kylian Neymar Mbappe for Mbappe. 180 million Messi. euros. The same year, the World Cup is played in Russia. The event is followed by half the world population. In the final, France wins its second title against Croatia. From this point on, all eyes turn to Qatar, which is preparing for the 2022 World Cup. The small country of 3 million inhabitants must be able to welcome more than a million supporters and must therefore build a lot of infrastructure, including hotels, a metro, and stadiums. Two million migrant workers are working on this project, but many NGOs denounce the Qatari system that allows employers to confiscate the passports of their workers to prevent them from leaving, even though they have no rights or even a minimum wage. Under pressure, Qatar is changing its laws to improve working conditions. But over a 10-year period, more than 6,500 workers have already died on World Cup construction sites. From an ecological point of view, the choice to air condition the stadiums, which are under the open sky, is also highly criticized. After Qatar, the next World Cup to be played in 2026 will be held in Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And it's is that not me? Is it me? Or is that a large distance to be traveling? Three countries. They've never had three countries hosting a World Cup, but that is some serious distance that teams potentially have to travel during a World Cup. And should be the first to include 48 teams. Today, football is the most popular sport in the world. It's played by approximately 275 million players, 13 million of whom are women, and generates approximately 400 billion euros in profits Crazy. worldwide. Well, there you go. That is the history of football. Talked a lot about World Cups there, but football has had a long period of pol politics involvement, corruption, uh, just it's crazy, isn't it? When it, when you look back over the whole time of football and see what actually has happened with the with so many conflicts, it's crazy, but fascinating at the same time. Football won't ever learn. Football football won't. It's not. It's it does bring people together, but clearly it divides people as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.